The story begins on a Friday night when a girl named Becca goes over to her friend Katie's place. The two girls don't find anything good to watch on TV, so they turn it off. Becca begins telling Katie about a cursed tape that kills whoever watches it seven days after they do. She talks about how the phones of the watcher supposedly ring the moment they finish and how a woman tells them they have seven days to live. Katie then tells her that she and her boyfriend Josh went to the mountains a week ago and watched the same tape. She then fakes death in front of Becca to prank her. While the two laugh over the prank, the phone downstairs suddenly rings, and fear instantly grips the two girls. They slowly walk down to the phone and are relieved to find out that it's Katie's mother calling. Katie then answers the call, but the moment she's done, the TV in the living room mysteriously comes on. She turns it off, but it comes on again, and at this point, she can feel an ominous aura in the house with her. Katie unplugs the TV and heads upstairs, but finds a puddle of water in front of her room door and sees that it was dripping from her doorknob. Mustering all the courage she has, Katie opens the door, but is terrified when she sees the picture of an eerie well on her TV. Three days later, a journalist named Rachel Keller goes to pick up her son, Aiden, from school, but the teacher asks to have a word with her. The teacher is worried that Rachel isn't spending enough time with Aiden and admits that he is a very independent child, but shares her concerns about his moody demeanor recently. Rachel concludes that it's because Aiden's cousin, Katie, died three days back and so he's grieving, but the teacher shows her pictures from a week ago that Aiden drew of Katie being buried. At night, Aiden vaguely tells Rachel that they don't have much time, insinuating that he and Katie knew she would die. On the day of the funeral, Rachel and Aiden go to Katie's home to comfort her parents, Ruth, who is Rachel's sister, and her husband. Ruth expresses her unrest concerning her daughter's death, explaining that none of the doctors could tell her the cause of Katie's mysterious death. Katie had died with a horrified look and blood oozing out of her face, and so the parents are having a hard time dealing with it. As a result, Ruth asks Rachel to use her skills to uncover the mystery of Katie's death. That same evening, Rachel hangs out with Katie's friends and finds out that Becca has been admitted to a mental hospital after the trauma of Katie's death. She also finds out that Katie's boyfriend Josh allegedly killed himself the same night she died, and the student that reveals this links their death to a cursed videotape they watched a week before. Afterward, Rachel goes to Katie's room and discovers that the faces in all of her magazines were painted with a pen. She also finds the address of a photo processing company that Katie recently contacted. The next day, Rachel goes to the place and gets the pictures they took and sees that Katie and three other students had their faces blurred out. Rachel does some digging and discovers that all three students died the same night Katie did, and they all went to the inn up in the mountains a week before she goes up to the shelter in the mountains for more investigation. When she gets there, she uses her skills to get the information she needs from the innkeeper. He confirms that four teenagers booked Cabin 12 and watched a videotape they got from the lobby. Rachel then decides to book the room as well and watch the tape. The moment it starts playing, it's quite obvious that something very dark is inside it. The images are disturbing and confusing and it sends chills down her spine. To make things worse, the moment she's done watching it, the hotel phone rings and when she answers, a little girl on the other line tells her that she has seven days left to live. At this point, Rachel is terrified, so she runs out of the spooky cabin and drives home with the tape. The next day, she invites her ex-boyfriend and Aiden's father, Noah, to help her make sense of the mystery. She asks him to take her picture, and her face comes out distorted. He insists on watching the videotape, so she lets him, and afterward, he still doesn't believe that the tape is responsible for the deaths of four teenagers. The phone suddenly rings when he's done watching it, but this time, Rachel doesn't answer, and neither does Noah. Despite his disbelief, Noah agrees to look into the matter and find out where the tape came from. The next day, she and Noah do some more investigation, and she makes a copy of the tape, but for some reason, he's unable to track the source of the tape. Suddenly, Beth, Noah's new girlfriend, arrives, and Rachel gets upset, so she leaves. On her way out, she sees a ladder just like the one she saw on the videotape, and she becomes afraid again. It's been three days since Rachel watched the video, and she goes to the mental hospital where Becca was admitted. She asks Becca what happened to Katie, but the traumatized teenager just tells her that she would find out in four days, when the seven-day period would elapse. Now more terrified than before, Rachel intensifies her investigations on the fourth day and studies the videotape at the facility with better technology. She manages to see a lighthouse in the footage that was blurry before. Pausing the video, she sees a fly still moving and pulls it out of the screen, which causes her nose to bleed. Afterward, she goes into full detective mode and studies the images in a library. 
Rachel finds out that the lighthouse is on Moesco Island. She also discovers that the strange woman on the tape is Anna Morgan, who lived on the island, breeding horses with her husband. Anna committed suicide after her horses mysteriously started dying, and so Rachel must find out how she's connected to all of it. The next day, Noah also begins to see strange things, and when he takes several pictures with his face coming out blurred, he finally believes Rachel. Meanwhile, at home, Rachel has a terrifying nightmare involving a girl at a mental hospital and wakes up to see Aiden watching the videotape. She rushes to turn it off, but he's already at the end, and the phone starts ringing. She hangs up the first time, but it rings again, and when she answers it, Noah is on the other line. The next day, Noah comes over to her house and has a heart-to-heart -heart with his son Aiden while Rachel stays inside and tries to find a way out. Eventually, with one day left before she would most likely die a mysterious death, she decided to go to Moesco Island and asked Noah to go to the psychiatric hospital where Anna was before she died. Before getting on the boat, Noah gives her a family picture that Aiden drew of them on the ferry. Rachel does some more research and finds out that Anna had a daughter. A while later, she comes across a horse in a cage that goes crazy when she touches it. It breaks out of the cage and jumps into the water, where it is killed by the turbines, causing the water to turn red, just like a scene in the videotape. Meanwhile, at the mental hospital, Noah is denied access to Anna's files, so he breaks in. Later, Rachel reaches Moesco Island and meets Anna's husband, Richard, on their farm. He invites her inside, but when she asks about Anna and his daughter, he asks her to leave claiming he doesn't have a daughter. Outside, Rachel notices that the house is the same one that Aiden drew in the family portrait, so she calls her sister Ruth so she can speak with him. Meanwhile, at the psychiatric hospital, Noah finds Anna's files and sees several records of miscarriages and weird x-rays, which causes his nose to start bleeding. On the phone, Aiden tells Rachel that the little girl was the one who told him to draw the house and reveals that she also told him that she hates living in the barn with the horses. Confused, Rachel asks him if she's still there and Aiden tells her that she now lives in a very dark place. Afterward, Rachel goes to see the island doctor named Grasnick. Rachel explains that she's seeing horrible things because of Morgan's daughter and she's shocked to hear someone say that after so long. She tells Rachel the whole story of how the Morgans desired a child for years but couldn't have one until one winter. They traveled and returned with a girl named Samara, who they adopted. Unfortunately, Samara's presence on the island caused paranormal events, like the horses drowning and her parents seeing horrible visions. Grosnick tells Rachel that she suggested her parents take her to the psychiatric hospital on the mainland for treatment, and since then, she hasn't seen her, but admits that ever since Samara left the island, things have been better. Meanwhile, at the hospital, Noah realizes that Richard Morgan stole the tape recording of Samara's sessions and tries to reach her, but can't because of the terrible reception. Back on the island, Rachel enters Morgan's house and finds Samara's birth certificate. She also watches the recording of Samara's sessions at the hospital. In the video, Samara tells the doctors that her father doesn't love her and that he would leave her because he loves the horses more than her. Richard attacks Rachel once the recording is finished and takes the TV to the bathroom. Rachel follows him, demanding to know what he did to Samara, but he just electrocutes himself after stating that his wife was never meant to have a child. A few moments later, Noah arrives and the two head to the barn for more investigation. There, they find a ladder that leads to an elevated room where Samara slept. Inside the room, Noah sees the objects that were in the x-ray pictures and they also find a burn mark drawing of a tree underneath the wallpaper. Rachel immediately recognizes the tree and recalls that she saw it in the Shelter Mountain Inn. With hours left before Rachel mysteriously dies, they head back to the inn and enter Cabin 12. The two come to a dead end to find no clues left but Noah refuses to give up and scatters the room until they find a clue on the floor. They break the wooden floor open and find a well under it. While they observe the well, water starts to seep out of the floor in the cabin because the hour marking the seven-day completion has come. Suddenly, flying insects come out of the well, and when they're distracted, the TV mysteriously falls into the broken floor, pushing Rachel into the deep well. Thankfully, the water level is quite low, and by some miracle, she survives the fall. Noah rushes out to find something to pull her out in a race against time because the sun is setting. Inside the shallow water, a hand comes out and grabs Rachel's arm, causing her to see one of Samara's memories. She sees the young girl standing by a well when Anna approaches her and suffocates her with a plastic bag before throwing her into the well with tears in her eyes. After the vision, she sees Samara's preserved body float up to the surface and she carries it, but the body immediately starts to decay until only her skeleton is left. Afterward, Noah pulls Rachel out and notifies the police to retrieve the corpse. While waiting for the police, they wonder why Anna killed Samara and Noah feels bad for the girl. He wonders how long she could have survived in the well 
Rachel concludes that it's seven days and presumes it's the reason why she's given people seven days to live after watching the tape. Afterward, Rachel and Noah leave the island together and take Aiden home. It seems like their adventure together has brought them closer together, and Noah asks her to call him the next day, kissing her forehead before leaving. The next morning, Aiden asks Rachel what happened to the girl, and she tells him that they saved her from the dark place. However, Aiden is horrified to hear this, telling Rachel that they weren't supposed to save Samara because he knows that she would never stop. Meanwhile, it's the seventh day since Noah saw the tape, and Samara comes for him. Rachel calls him to try and save him, but he doesn't pick up the phone because he's distracted by the TV that's showing the well. Samara suddenly comes out of the well and emerges from the TV, killing Noah the same way she killed Katie, by making him see all the horrible images and the ring. Elsewhere, Rachel drives as fast as she can to get to Noah, but when she enters his apartment, she finds him dead with a disfigured face. Heartbroken, she returns home and destroys the tape and burns it, but then she sees the copy she made lying under a chair. Realizing that she might have survived because she made a copy of the tape, she helps Aiden make another copy to transfer the curse to the person who watches it. The story ends with Aiden asking his mother what would happen to the person who watches the copy they create, but she doesn't answer. 